Well, <clears throat> looks like they were here this morning. Got the new 200 amp service with the shutoff right there. Guess that comes down, goes back up the pole, and back into that other, down through that, down to down, down. <sighs> now they got that done at least. Yep, we're out here at the farm. And I'm not moving too good today, guys. I really don't know what's wrong. All I know is I extremely, extremely hurt. So we're just getting out to the farm. At least the wind's blowing. This is drying up. But our temperatures are going to suck. Chance of snow or so this weekend. I'm like, really? But, uh, anyway, there's that. We dropped the transmission off last night. That was smelling a lot better. Since propane falls, I got it upside down, so. <sighs> Still nervous about working on an old tank, but. Anyhow. But we're here at the farm. I'm going to try and get the day started, so see y'all later. Well, God, I'm just... Anyway, all right, see you in a few. Day three of the 5.3 motor build. Installing the pistons and rings and that. Uh, cranks in. Huh. Cranks in. I gotta wipe some gunk off. And uh, we're getting ready to set the rings. So I'll be right back. Okay, we got the uh, rods one, five, uh, three, five, and seven here. And uh, we're gonna just go ahead and put the bottom oil rings on these. And I'm going to go back and as I, today as I fit the piston rings, then they'll go on their pistons at that time. So, let's see. And again, put the rings on the motor. I'm just going to take this clean rig. everything down. And then uh, you put your troll ring here. I put my thumb where that usually splits so I remember to then I take the gap here, put it away from that split. The top. And then I put this one on away from the other one. From the end. And this is the only ring that set of rings you can do that to on here. There's that one. get a room built on there's gonna be a clean 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 area for putting motors together. Push down.
matter if I ain't saying much today, I just... I hurt, it hurt bad today. I don't know why. And I, as you've seen, I've got to make an oil, pressurized oil can to pre-lube this motor with, because I guess if you don't, you run the risk of ruining everything. I'm like, really? Okay. I don't mind making tools, but I guess I wasn't really set up to do these LS motors, but I will be when I'm done. See, sometimes you inadvertently push the one out. Now then you got to start all over. put them back in the box, check the gaps one more time since we had to have a few of them touched. And we didn't have to do much. I mean, it just was a half a thou or so that he had to take out of them there. So, and as I know those rings are good, then I'll put them on the pistons. So, I'll get those set up. I've already showed you guys uh, checking the ring gaps. I ain't going to do it again. But you want to see that? Go to the first video on this. Well, I got the, I got I got to get the playlist set up again. But anyway, all right, I'll be back. Okay, the ring gaps are good. So this is number seven. And rings. This particular set go with the dyno. And here's my ring expander. Because you do not want to roll these rings on because you'll ruin them. So, just like that. And it's on. So, number five. Yep, the ring gaps are with inspect. I thought they would have changed a little too with him honing it, but they didn't. I mean, he barely had to touch the cylinders to get the pistons to fit out. Number one. There's the, the second ring. Now we'll have to do the top rings. Down up too, so.
a little easier to use the piston now that there's a ring on it. And the top ring specs is different than the second ring. Oh, okay. We got a second compression ring, 2002 lighter, 4.5.3 motors. I say that ring can have a 17 to 27 thousandths gap. The top ring, compression ring now, which I'm dealing with, is a 10 to 16 thousandths gap. Alright. Oh, no, no, no. That's production. Oh. Nope, sorry, scratch that. 9 to 17 thousandths gap for 2003 and later motors. 9 to 17 thousandths, okay? Let's see. 9, 10, 11. Okay. Service limit is 20. Twenty thousandths already, and that's the service limits for the top ring. All right, God dang it! Ring gap's good. Uh, we're good. Um, we're good. So we have to be good. There's nothing else we can do now. Committed. And where did I just ring pull in my ring pliers? Really? Really? You guys just watched me put on those rings. Now basically sit down here. Look at the ring gaps. Oh my. Ah! You guys hit him under my notebook. Jesus. Okay, now. Tell him to make sure here. The dots are up. Okay. Dots are up. So. That dot there.
that one all the way up over there. So that that's it. something else here. I know I feel like I explain this a lot, but I notice some people don't go back and watch older videos, which that's fine. I don't care. Okay. As you can see, I got one ring gap there, one ring gap there. I don't like them being over the wrist pins. So I'll take those two rings and turn them there. Now, 180 degrees apart from one another should make it almost impossible for those rings to ever line up. Again, top ring here, this ring there, turn it. So you got one gap there, one gap there. Because what I found when I took this motor down, I'll show you on this last one, five out of the eight pistons was like this. They were lined up where the rings, the gap was there. And, and even being offset, this one's here and that one's there. Being that close, it will screw with your compression. So, now we are 180 apart. Which now we are to the part where I need to get, dig out some more tools and some assembly lube. And we can slide this in. I'm just, I'm running on empty, and I don't know why. I really, really don't. But, uh, all right, I'll get out some more tools. Hey, sorry, I just uh, put the most of the grease on without you guys. Sorry. And I just take and make sure it gets and all over the piston. Spread that in the cylinder. Bring the presser here. Notch goes forward. Set this down for a second. There's this stuff. And I don't have anything to put on the rods, but since there's no bolts. Again. 
That looks better. Okay. Okay, got that. I gotta get You want to make sure that this edge here is setting square on the motor. And you got your notch forward and you just, that was nice and sweet. That's what you want when you're putting the pistons in. You don't want it to catch or feel like it caught. So. Okay, sit down so I can help bear that on. Right. And I've already wiped down the rod throw. Oh, that was too simple. I'm already there. Huh. That's nice. And then. Remember, these rod caps only go on one way now. We're going to get them all in, then I'll roll it upside down, then I'll check the bearing clearances. As long as it keeps rolling over with hand tight, I'll be good. So I guess I'll just sit up and do that eight more times. And well, actually, three more times, then we'll roll it upside down and check the clearances. And uh, hopefully they're right on. Well. I just talked to the company right there as I called and somebody was busy couldn't talk to me right now so I just took matters to my own hands I'm building the motor and then I come across a bearing that this is like somebody who tried writing a number or something and I took that out of the package I open the plastic and I'm like, what in the hell is wrong with that? I says, you know, oops, come on. I says, you know, just like, I said, I'm getting back in the building motors. And I said, I got a customer's motor here. I'm trying to get done. The place I bought it through, or they're busy, couldn't talk to me. And it's going to take time and I says you know I'm, I'm getting him back into the building motors and I'm finding out there is no quality control why did that bearing get sent out I don't know but I just emailed them a picture and that, the pictures and they're gonna send me one right out so hopefully whether I go through the machine shop or what it's gonna be a couple days before I get one so I'm like, really? I said, I can catch my finger on it. It's, I could probably scotch bright it, but not anymore. I just dropped the damn thing. But, uh, 
I don't want to be scotch bright and bearing. I want this motor to go another 190,000 miles. So, and if I want to cut, oh, that just <sighs> disgusting. So, anyway, I'm going to get the last three pistons I can. Well, I can actually put them all in. No, put all three of them in and go from there. But I told my sister, you know, why doesn't it seem like they're any quality control anymore? He's like, we're sorry about that. We'll get. He's email me the info and the picture, and we'll get it out to you. I like, go, all right. So. Okay, the pistons rods are in. And you're going now. Wait a second. You had to go hoof the bearing. Yes, number eight. When that bearing gets here, I got to pull that one out and redo it. But I didn't want the piston laying up here on the bench, having a risk of getting knocked down. So. And I'm starting to get flustered. Um, I was going to check the rod clearances, but I'm done for the day. I, I'm, do, I'm done doing um, um, what do I want to say? I'm done doing um, brain work. <laughs> uh, I'm done doing critical measurement work right now. I, know, I want to check the rod clearances, but I'm just shot. I don't know. But anyway, I guess. So, but since I'm having so much trouble with this 5.3, I'm about ready to take that motor off its engine stand right there after I weld those pipes onto the bars. Throw him in the engine cleaner. This oil pan, I'm almost thinking about running through the uh, hot tank. So I might just set up and do some cleaning. I know the inside of the pan's pretty clean, but the outside, I ain't too happy with how clean that is. I think my hot tank can do better, so. I guess. Uh, Oh, I, I think that's what I'm going to do. We're done working on the 5.3, so that works out good, because first video of the day will be, it's a, yeah. All right, well, that's day three of the 5.3. It's spinning over good, so. Pistons all went in. I only had one fight me with the ring, and that was simple. It just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. anyway. All right.